Total Pro Sports presents the 15 biggest scapegoats in sports history. Sadly, when a sports team loses a game, the media and the club's fans will sometimes blame one player, coach, or official. And that's what we call a scapegoat. Here are the 15 biggest scapegoats of all time. Number 15, Pete Carroll. With the Seahawks blowing a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter of Super Bowl 49 against the Patriots, Russell Wilson moved the team to the New England one-yard line in the last minute. But Carroll opted to throw it instead of rushing with power back Marshawn Lynch. No one understands that play call with all the blame going to Carroll. Number 14, Roberto Luongo. Vancouver Canucks goaltender Roberto Luongo had led the team to six division titles, a Western Conference Championship, won two Olympic gold medals, and set the records for wins and shutouts. Yet any time the Canucks faltered in the playoffs, Bobby Lou took all the blame from the media and fans when they lost to the Boston Bruins in the 2011 Stanley Cup Final. Number 13, Jose Mesa. In the 1997 World Series, the Cleveland Indians played the Florida Marlins, looking to win their first World Series ring since 1948. Cleveland went to the top of the ninth with a 2-1 lead, but the Cleveland closer failed to get the job done, sending the game to extras where the Marlins would win. Number 12, Nick Anderson. It's sad when Orlando Magic fans will remember him for a series of missed free throws instead of all the greatness he did for the franchise, but such is the case with Anderson. The Magic got to the 1995 NBA Finals after Anderson let them pass the Chicago Bulls earlier in the playoffs, facing the Houston Rockets. However, in Game 1, Anderson, a reliable free-throw shooter, missed four of them which would have sealed the game. The Rockets rallied to force OT where they'd go on to sweep the series. Number 11, Jackie Smith. We'll always remember Vern Lundquist's infamous radio call where he referred to Jackie as the sickest man in America. Super Bowl 13 featured two prominent squads, the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Steel Curtain would prevail 35 to 31, so it was a shootout. How can one man get blamed on Dallas? Smith, a Hall of Fame tight end, was left wide open in the end zone for an easy touchdown, but he dropped Roger Stobach's beautiful pass. The Cowboys were down by seven at the time and had to settle for a field goal where they wound up losing by four, so his drop did in fact make a difference. Number 10, Grady Little. Following the 2003 ALCS, it was hard for the Red Sox fans to be optimistic after a crushing seven-game defeat to the Yankees. With Boston winning 5-2 in the eighth inning and needing five outs to get to the big dance, manager Grady Little left starting pitcher Pedro Martinez in after 118 pitches thrown with runners on. The Yankees tied it up that inning and won in extras, and Little never managed the Red Sox again. Number 9. Don Denkinger the 1985 World Series between the St. Louis Cardinals and Kansas City Royals was a thriller, so perhaps the wrong team won, at least in the Cards fans' eyes. With St. Louis holding a 3-2 series lead and a 1-0 lead in the ninth inning of Game 6, umpire Don Denkinger wrongfully called Jorge Orta safe when he was clearly out. The Royals would rally from there, winning Game 6 and 7. Number 8. Mickey Owen in the 1941 World Series, four-time All-Star Mickey Owens' Brooklyn Dodgers faced the New York Yankees, with Brooklyn trailing 2-1 in the series. Tommy Henrik struck out to supposedly end Game 4, and even the series at two games apiece. However, Owen dropped a third strike, Henrik got on base, and the Yankees would rally to win Game 4, before clinching the championship in Game 5. Number 7. Chris Webber A five-time All-Star had an incredible NBA career. Webber is best remembered for one major error in his college days. With his Michigan squad trailing North Carolina by two in the 1993 NCAA Division I championship, Weber called timeout with 11 seconds left. Only his team had none. That resulted in a technical and gave NC the title with ease. Number 6. Steve Smith Unlike many others on our list, Steve Smith made up his mistake by leading the Edmonton Oilers to three Stanley Cups. As a rookie, it wasn't so pretty. Smith's Oilers played the Calgary Flames in the 1986 Smythe Division Final, with Game 7 tied late in the third. Smith accidentally put the puck of his own goaltender and in, which stood up as the game-winning goal in the series for Calgary. Number 5. Bill Buckner He'd certainly be much higher on this list if his Red Sox didn't win a World Series in 2004, but Mr. Buckner had his franchise make up for it decades after a huge error. In Game 6 of the 1986 World Series, Boston led the series 3-2 and took a two-run lead into the 10th inning. Mookie Wilson hit a slow grounder to first baseman Buckner, but it rolled through his legs. The Mets won the game and would win Game 7, and Buckner's career was remembered for that one error. Number 4. Harry Frazee He sold Babe Ruth to the Yankees in 1919 as the Red Sox owner. The Yankees would become a dominant club, 26 World Series between 1923 and 2000. 
Meanwhile, the Red Sox went from 1918 to 2003 without a World Series before winning in 2004. You know the story. Number 3. Scott Norwood It's not Norwood's fault the Buffalo Bills lost four Super Bowls in the 90s, but one good kick would have given the city at least one to celebrate. In Super Bowl 25, Norwood's Bills faced the stingy New York Giants defense. Trailing 2019 late, Norwood just needed to make a 47-yard field goal to hand the Bills the Super Bowl, but it went wide right. You know how the rest played out. Number 2. Steve Bartman The Chicago Cubs heading into the 2016 season hadn't made the World Series since 1945 and hadn't won it since 1908. With a 3-2 series lead in the 2003 NLCS against the Marlins, the Cubs led 3-0 in the eighth inning. Luis Castillo hit a foul ball that would have been caught by Moises Alou, but fan Steve Bartman interfered. The Cubs gave up eight runs in that inning, while the Marlins would win the World Series, simple ending. Bartman received death threats with the police having to protect his house for him. Not his fault the Cubs squandered such a lead. Number 1. Merkel's Boner That's how they refer to the play. In 1908, New York Giants standout Fred Merkel led his team to a critical pennant game against the Cubs. The Cubs scored the winning run in the decisive game, but Merkel didn't touch his base and he got tagged out. The teams played a makeup game to determine the winner and of course Chicago would win. If Merkel had touched his base, history would have been different. Who is the biggest scapegoat of your favorite team's history? Tell us in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you didn't subscribe, now's a good time to do so. We upload 7 videos a week. As always, we thank you so much for watching.